Good afternoon and thank you for joining us at today's webinar. My name is Denek Weinlich, I'm a Senior Vat Manager at Meridian Global Services. Amazon has asked Meridian to explain VAT-related obligations under its MCI program and therefore today's topic will be multi-country inventory shipments and VAT. I will try to convince you that VAT should not be a barrier to using uh, MCI program as well as should not be a barrier from expanding internationally uh, throughout Amazon. Questions that we'll be answering today are what VAT related obligations do I have when I move my inventory under the MCI program within the European Union? And what is the difference between Amazon's MCI and the EFN, so-called European Fulfillment Network, program from a VAT perspective? In case you have more questions, uh, feel free to submit them through the Q&A manager, where my colleague Andrea Yudin will be answering those as we go along in the presentation. Earlier this year, uh, we have held another webinar talking exclusively about the EFN uh, program and distance selling. We'll be touching base, of course, on that topic as well, uh, but the main uh, aim today is to uh, show the difference between those two programs and the VAT related uh, obligations resulting from them. In order to ensure that we all uh, are on the same page, uh, we will be talking today about sales to private individuals, uh, where the inventory is sold uh, to customer directly from an EFN location um, into another EU country or where the inventory is firstly moved under the MCI program and subsequently sold from the respective fulfillment center. There are different rules that apply when you sell to businesses who are registered for VAT in other EU countries. And there are also different rules that apply when you either import goods from outside of the U European Union into the European Union or when you sell to customers uh, and ship the goods outside of the European Union. Um, if you sell to businesses or if you sell to customers in non-EU countries or have imports into the European Union, um, those issues are rather complex and we will be more than happy to discuss them with them, to discuss them with you uh, individually. Um, for the avoidance of doubt, uh, we will be talking today about sales of goods, that means physical products that are subject to physical shipment. Uh, there are different rules that apply to services that are provided online. Um, you have uh, probably heard about the 2015 changes um, and uh, the question could be how do they uh, affect you as a, as a seller through our Amazon. The answer is they will not affect you uh, because those changes relate exclusively to supply of electronically supplied services whereby today will be talking about uh, supply of physical goods and in respect to the uh, rules that apply uh, to the distance selling and to the MCI program uh, there are currently no plans uh, to change those rules from a VAT perspective. I'm sure you recognize this scenario is a very basic one uh, talking about shipments and sales within the UK where the goods are delivered uh, from either an EFN fulfillment center in the UK or from uh, your own um, organization to a customer within the UK. Um, VAT that is collected from the customer is then remitted to the UK tax authorities um, and there are no obligations in any other European countries resulting out of this uh, basic uh, scenario. If we talk about the EFN program and what it means for you, um, We'll be talking about an example here where uh, your customer is a German private individual and uh, under the EFN program you supply goods uh, from the UK to the customer in Germany. And uh, the question is uh, whether you have to charge UK VAT or whether you have to charge German VAT. The answer here is uh, it depends, um, as you may know, uh, the distance selling rules are applicable in such a scenario where goods are sold from one EU country, the UK, to a customer uh, in another EU country. And in very simple terms, if your sales 
on an annual basis do not exceed a distance selling threshold which is set out um, by the respective country. In case of Germany it's 100,000 euros on an annual basis. So if your sales to Germany do not exceed 100,000 euros per year, you charge UK VAT and you do not have uh, obligation to register for VAT in Germany. If your sales exceed 100,000 euros on an annual basis, German VAT has to be charged on sales that exceed that distance selling threshold, which means that you will also have an obligation to register in Germany and fulfill German VAT obligations. Uh, once um, you register in Germany where you reach uh, that distance selling threshold, um, you will be obliged to file also German VAT returns, obviously in addition to your UK returns. And you will need to charge an account for German VAT at the appropriate rate on all shipments or all sales to private individuals uh, going forward. And of course the VAT that you collect uh, from the customer you will be obliged to pay or remit to the German tax authorities instead of uh, to the UK VAT. So you will be charging German VAT and not UK VAT uh, anymore. Now on the other hand, if we look at the MCI program, how it works, um, we talked about um, movement of inventory uh, from one EU country to another EU country. In this case, we have a, a fulfillment center in Germany and the MCI program um, means that inventory before it's sold, it's moved into a fulfillment center located in another EU country. Um, Today, the fulfillment centers that are uh, open within the MCI program are located in Germany, France, Italy, and Spain. So from a VAT perspective, um, when we're moving inventory from the UK to Germany, the uh, question is whether VAT has to be accounted for, and if so, uh, what VAT? We have here four options. Uh, the option D, it depends. Is usually a very common answer if you ask any VAT related question um, but um, in all seriousness uh, does VAT need to be accounted for when you all you do is you move the inventory from the UK to Germany without an inventory being sold the answer is surprisingly that yes VAT has to be accounted for and it's a German VAT um, we'll go uh, a little bit uh, down the line um, into details why German VAT has to be accounted for because as you may ask yourself um, I have not sold anything yet out of the German fulfillment center all I have done is move my inventory from the UK to Germany uh, why do I have an obligation to account for German VAT and why do I have an obligation to register for VAT in Germany the answer is that movement of goods between European or EU countries by a company is a considered a taxable supply from a VAT perspective. So when you move inventory from one EU country to another EU country, this is considered a taxable supply and you have an obligation to register in the ship to country, in this case in Germany, and you will have an obligation uh, to report uh, those shipments uh, in the UK as well as reporting obligation uh, in Germany. So if we talk about the actual uh, obligations uh, or the VAT rated obligations that result out of the inventory movement, we're moving here inventory from the UK uh, to Germany to the German uh, fulfillment center um, of Amazon and without any goods being sold uh, We'll list here the obligations that you will have in the UK. Uh, you will have to report in your UK VAT return a zero rated intra community supply. Again, even though no goods are being sold, uh, the fact that you move inventory from UK to Germany, uh, from a VAT perspective, you essentially have to uh, report a supply of goods from the UK to uh, Germany. As well as on the UK EC sales list, you will have to report that movement. Uh, an EC sales list is a report that shows all your supplies of goods and eventual services. But from this perspective, all your supplies of goods to businesses registered for VAT in other EU countries. 
um, and also Introstat reporting uh, subject to thresholds which uh, in the UK it's uh, 250 uh, pounds if your sales out of the UK uh, exceed uh, that threshold you will be obliged to uh, submit um, the Introstat dispatch reports from a German perspective um, as you may uh, know um, the fact that you move the goods from the UK to Germany you have a registration obligation in Germany um, on the basis that the goods arrive in Germany from the UK you will have to self account for German intra community acquisition VAT uh, which means that you have to report the acquisition of those goods in your German water returns as a uh, output VAT liability and at the same time as an input VAT deduction so there are no cash flow obligations but a reporting uh, that needs to be done as well as the intrastats in, in Germany if your arrivals in Germany exceed the German intrastat arrival threshold which is 500,000 uh, euros you will be obliged to report um, uh, for statistical purposes uh, those goods so this is uh, the first leg of the supply where you move the inventory from the UK to Germany if we look now uh, to the second leg of the supply where you actually sell the goods from the German fulfillment center to the customer in Germany um, German VAT has to be charged on that actual sale the reason why is that uh, the goods are being supplied within Germany and therefore German VAT uh, is due you could be also then selling from the German fulfillment center to customers in other EU countries and uh, that fulfillment center in Germany would then essentially become um, a, an EFN um, uh, fulfillment center where you would need to um, observe the distance selling thresholds uh, into other EU countries where goods are being shipped from Germany uh, to customers um, in the other European countries or EU countries. If you look at the differences between uh, the MCI and the EFN program, uh, from a threshold perspective, uh, under the EFN program, uh, there's this distance selling uh, threshold, which if uh, you uh, exceed the distance selling threshold, you have to register for VAD in the ship to country. Um, if you don't exceed uh, the distance selling threshold, you charge VAD of the ship from uh, country. Um, and there is no obviously uh, liability to register um, in the ship to country unless you exceed that threshold. The MCI program uh, does not, or the, the, the VAT obligations uh, resulting from the MCI program uh, do not have any threshold. When you move the inventory uh, cross border, you have immediate VAT registration obligation in the ship to country. From a supplier's perspective, uh, under the EFN program, there is one supply from the UK to the German customer, direct supply um, between the fulfillment center in the UK, in this case, and the German customer. Under the MCI program, however, there are two supplies, one uh, being the actual movement of goods from the UK to the German fulfillment center, and the other supply, the second leg of the supply, is then the actual sale of the goods from the German fulfillment center to the customer in Germany. Um, in terms of the reporting, uh, under the EFN program, uh, we said that if your sales are below distance selling threshold, you're charging UK VAT and you have no reporting obligations in the customer's country. If your sales are above the distance selling threshold, uh, you have an obligation to register in the ship to country and will have to charge the ship to countries VAT. Um, under the MCI program, uh, again, we said there's an immediate VAT registration liability uh, and obligation to self account uh, for the VAT in the ship to country purely on the basis of acquiring uh, the goods in that country. If you look on the other hand, what is the same um, between those two programs? Under the EFN program, once you are above the distance selling threshold, you have to register in the ship to country. Under the MCI program, 
um, there is no threshold as we mentioned earlier um, and you also have to register in the ship to country so uh, from if, if your sales are uh, significant enough so that the distance selling threshold uh, let's say in Germany of 100,000 euros on an annual basis is reached the consequences between those two programs are the same you have to register for VAT um, from an interest at reporting perspective, um, again, if your sales are significant uh, enough so that the interest at threshold is reached, uh, you will have to submit the interest at report in both countries, in the UK as well as in Germany, under both programs. From an invoicing perspective, under both MCI and EFM program, you will be obliged to issue BAT invoices. Uh, simply because under the European um, legislation from a VAT directive perspective as well as based on uh, the uh, rules that are in the European Union countries uh, distant sellers uh, have to issue VAT invoices as well as invoices will have to be issued when you move the goods uh, cross-border um, even though you'll be issuing an invoice essentially to yourself documenting the movement of goods from the UK to Germany um, unfortunately, such a reporting requirement and invoicing requirement um, is there. If you look uh, now at a summary uh, of the consequences from a VAT perspective and the EFN program, so we have here two customers, one in Germany and one in France, and uh, we have here the UK Fulfillment Center. This essentially means that uh, we're talking here about uh, Germany where the distance selling threshold has been reached so the sales on an annual basis into Germany have exceeded 100,000 euros and therefore the price that you charge your customer does include German VAT. That German VAT that will be collected from the customer will have to be paid to the German authorities instead of to the UK authorities. On the other hand, sales to your French customers, because in this example you have not exceeded the distance selling threshold in France, um, your price does include UK VAT, and UK VAT has to be collected from the customer and paid to the UK authorities. So again, uh, the more customers in different countries you have, uh, you will need to ensure that the distance selling threshold is observed for each individual country. Um, those distance selling thresholds are either 35,000 euros or 100,000 euros or the equivalent of those amounts in local currency in countries that did not adopt euro. When we look at the same uh, summary uh, from an MCI perspective, uh, we see here clear uh, distinguishing factor of those two supplies one being when you move the inventory from the UK to the German Fulfillment Center where on that basis uh, you have a registration liability in Germany and you have to self-account for German acquisition VAT. Obviously if the shipments into uh, the German Fulfillment Centers are significant and uh, there's also the obligation to submit the interest of reporting that we discussed earlier. Once German customer places the order and buys the goods, uh, we are charging uh, German VAT and that German VAT has to be then collected and remitted to the German authorities instead of to the UK authorities. So again, the difference between the MCI program and the EFN program is that under the EFN program you have one location from where you distribute your goods or from where the goods are shipped uh, to customers in different EU countries and you need to make sure that you observe the distance selling threshold for each individual country. If your sales into that country are below the distance selling threshold you charge the ship from country VAT, in most cases probably the UK VAT. Um, if your distance selling uh, or if your sales exceed those distance selling thresholds, you have an obligation to register in the customer's country and uh, from that moment on start charging uh, the customer's country uh, VAT. And the MCI program, which is available uh, in, uh, in Germany, uh, France, Italy and Spain currently, 
um, it allows you to move inventory from the UK or from wherever else, move the inventory from one EU country into that country of the of the fulfillment center, in this case in Germany, and that movement of itself represents a taxable supply and has to be reported in the UK, as we saw before, and uh, result into a registration obligation um, in the ship to country or in the in Germany. From that moment on, any sale to German customers would be subject to German VAT, so there are no more thresholds um, available when you start selling from Germany to German customers. We have here some uh, common questions that we come across uh, from our clients. Um, one of the questions is, how will different VAT rates affect my pricing? And do I need to charge different prices to customers in different countries? Um, the, the, the answer here is that it usually depends on the business, um, how uh, the pricing policy works. We've seen many clients that have the same pricing across multiple jurisdictions and the uh, uh, difference in uh, the VAT rates is then taken out of the company's margin. So you can have obviously prices uh, across the whole European Union, um, but any prices then sold within that, uh, um, within that customer's country are to be understood, including applicable VAT. What rate of VAT do I charge on shipping fees? Um, any shipping or transportation costs uh, that are being charged to customers are only ancillary uh, to the actual supply of goods and therefore uh, the VAT rate is the same that applies for the supply of goods. Do I need to issue invoices? Uh, we touched that topic uh, shortly, a little bit before. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, distant sellers, uh, that means if you sell under the EFM program, are required to issue bad invoices to customers. Um, and if you use the MCI program, we talked about the two-step uh, supplies. Uh, for both of those supplies, uh, you will require to issue um, invoices. Um, can I do it all by myself or will I need help? Um, it, it is a very good question because in countries where um, the authorities or the VAT returns are in the same language or in the language that you can understand, we see very often that companies uh, do and prepare the VAT returns by themselves. Um, on the other hand, in countries um, that speak different language and the VAT returns have to be completed in a different uh, language, uh, many companies uh, would reach out to external uh, professional service provider like Meridian. When you have an obligation to register in one other country, let's, let's see, like Germany in, in our example that we use today, um, it, it is manageable because um, next to your UK returns you have to also prepare your German returns. Uh, but once you start exceeding the distance selling thresholds or if you move the inventory to the different uh, MCI locations, um, you may find the rules complex because as I mentioned there are different VAT returns uh, in each of the country. Uh, there are different deadlines, uh, there are different rules, and obviously uh, each VAT return has to be submitted in a local language. Um, any communication with the authorities usually also is in the local language. Um, I hope uh, you have found uh, the webinar uh, useful. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, submit them uh, through the Q&A manager or eventually feel free to reach out to us directly. Um, again, if uh, your specific supply chain has not been covered today and you would like to discuss it, uh, please feel free to uh, get in touch with us. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, attention and uh, we'll see you soon on another uh, webinar with Amazon.